So welcome back to finals day here at the Ordenza Sports Park. Our next final of the day is an all-Japanese affair. The women's doubles, Yuki Fukushima and Sayaka Hirota, the two-time World Championship silver medalists, up against Shihō Tanaka and Kohari Yonemoto, the beaten finalists a year ago. Well, when we look at the race to Guangzhou standings, we can see that Fukushima and Hirota are currently number two. But by virtue of the fact they're in the final today, whether they win or lose, they will go to number one. And that is vital because uh, there's four Japanese pairs there, as you can see, and the fourth ranked Japanese pair on that list are the world champions. So they get an automatic invitation and you're not allowed more than two pairs from any one nation. So in other words, those top three women's doubles pairs from Japan are all fighting to be the number one to go to the World Tour Finals. As far as Tanaka and Yonimoto are concerned, the finalists today, they're currently ranked 15 on that list, the seventh Japanese pair. So even if they win today, I can't see them actually qualifying for the World Tour Finals and considering they won the Super Series Finals at the end of last year. That's a tough tall order for Tanaka and Yonimoto. Well, as far as the women's doubles draw is concerned, by quarterfinal stage, we had two Japanese pairs and two Indonesian pairs, so six different nations involved. Only four seeds, two in the top half and two in the bottom half. And the only seeds to lose from quarterfinal stage was uh, Kiri Harakun and Prajongjai. So, in the top half of the draw, it was the World Championship silver medalists against the World Championship bronze medalists. And when you consider in the bottom half of the draw, Kim and Kong were only playing their second tournament together. For them to be in the semi-final stage was quite remarkable. But it is last year's beaten finalists, Tanaka and Yonimoto, who will play against the world number ones, Fukushima and Hirota. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the final of the women's doubles, please welcome from Japan, the winners of Japan Open and Indonesia Open, silver medalists at the World Championship, coming ranked number one in the world, Yuki Fukushima and Sayaka Hirota. The current world number ones, Yuki Fukushima, leading out Sayaka Hirota for the women's doubles final. This their eighth final this year, their sixth world tour final of the and year. Their opponents, semi-finalists at Thailand Open, All England Open and the World Championships. Also from Japan, please welcome Shiro Tanaka and Koharo Yonimoto. Shiho Tanaka and Koharu Yonimoto. Second consecutive final here at the Denmark Open for the World Championship bronze medalists. This the seventh all Japanese women's doubles final of this year at the 20th World Tour event. And incidentally, it's the seventh time in the last nine events from the Indonesian Super 1000 events, Singapore, Spain Masters, China, Korea, Chinese Taipei, and now Denmark. So we were talking a little earlier about dominance from one nation. There is a little bit of dominance at the moment in women's doubles with Japan. This is the seventh meeting between the two pairs and the last time that they met was in the semi-final of the World Championships. It was two straight games, 21-19, 21-15 in 51 minutes. But it is the third time they're meeting in a final. The first time was two years ago at the Chinese Taipei Masters, which was only a Grand Prix event. And that was won by Fukushima and Kyoroka. And then, of course, the Super Series Finals in Dubai last December, and it was won by Tanaka and Yonimoto. 
Yuki Fukushima is 25 years of age, born in Yatsushiro City in Kumamoto Prefecture. Enjoying their 13th week in total as world number ones. And Sayaka Hirota, a year younger, the age of 24, also from Kumamoto. Making just their second appearance here at the Denmark Open. Last year they were the number four seeds and lost in the second round. But as you can see, they have been very, very impressive this year. Quarter final against Bonapa and Already. And the semi final against number three seeds, the other pair that won a bronze medal at the World Championships, Puri and Rahai. I say other pair because, of course, their opponents of today also won a bronze medal. So to Shiho Tanaka, turned 26 last month, also from Kumamoto. And they are currently number six on the world rankings, and that is the fourth Japanese pair. Kuharu Yonimoto is 27 from Hiroshima. And they, like their opponents, are only making their second appearance here. So two finals and two appearances is pretty good going for Tanaka and Yonimoto. Well, they did get pushed the full distance, and that was in their quarter-final against Du Yule and Lee Kun Kuei. An hour and 20 minutes for that, and as I say, their semi-final against Kim and Kong, who were only playing their second tournament together, that Korean combination, they did remarkably well to get through to the semi-final stage. So Jan Andersson from Sweden is our umpire. Michel Gut from France is the service judge. So, fourth-ranked Japanese pair, Tanaka and Yonimoto, five pairs from Japan in the top 10 and seven pairs in the top 15 in the world. It really is remarkable. It is it is really dominance at the moment from Japanese women's doubles pairs. Women's doubles and Japan. They Japan has taken over from China. China used to have a situation like this, let's say, eight, ten years ago, but now it's Japan. Absolutely. So we wait for the umpire yeah. to get the players ready. Ready? Ready? Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Yuki Fukushima, Sayaka Hirota, Japan. <laughs> and on my left, Kuaro Yonemoto, Shihio Tanaka, Japan. <laughs> Yuki Fukushima to serve to Shio Tanaka. Love all. Play. So the World Championship silver medalists are getting this final underway against the World Championship bronze medalists. Yeah, and a good smash from Tanaka. Service over. This is only One the second love. time in the history of the Denmark Open that we've had two pairs from Japan battling out the final. The first was in 2010 when Mayuki Maeda and Satoko Suitsuna beat Matsuo and Nato in the final. My quiz question of the day, and it's a bit of a trick one, oh. I have to be honest. Service At over. least you're warning one. me. Oh. What women's doubles player was the last to contest at least two consecutive finals here at the Denmark Open? 
and I've given a clue by the same player rather than pair. Two, one. No. I thought that was a good, good one. Yeah. Last three Denmark Opens, Shin Sung Chan has been in the final. She won last year with Lee So Hee. Mm. She was Some beaten. Career. She was beaten in the final in 2016 with Jung Kyung Ong. Three, but one. they, as a pair, won in 2015. Three okay. consecutive finals. Yeah. Well played. Service over. Two, three. I always think it's a shame. There's polite a, a applause from the Four, fans here in Ordenza, but they're not sure which pair to support, and it's such a shame because these are two real quality pairs. And I thought from the World Championship finals in Nanjing recently, I thought the all Japanese women's doubles final was the best final of those World Championships. I agree with you. I yeah. enjoyed that women's doubles in Nanjing a lot when we were doing that Service one as well. Over. Three, um, four. But I, I think, you know, to, to appreciate it, uh, people sort of need to have someone to cheer for. Yes. And um, but the quality of this uh, women's doubles is so high, really yeah. high. I was commentating on... Uh, Fukushima and Hirota yesterday against uh, Puli and Rahayu. And um, I felt Four. that Hirota is having quite a lot of chances at the net, intercepting, having these 50-50 ones, but she's not taking them. She's playing it very safe, and that's one of the reasons why we have these long rallies when they play. They are very good all-rounders, both of them. A lot is coming back, but when they have these... Yeah, 50-50 chances. They're not really making the best of it. But let's see if that's the same today. And it's Hir Hirota. It was not especially Hirota that yeah. did not take the chances. Very often she's playing the block shot. Mm. Well, that is absolutely fascinating because I heard almost exactly the same verbalisation when I was at the China Open from Steen Peterson. <laughs> OK. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. That's Just long. Yeah. He thought exactly the same thing. He felt that she was the better of the two Five, at the front of the court, four. but that she really needs to improve her finishing skills at the, at the front. She's got to be able to put them away. Yeah. And Fukushima is working so hard in, in many, many, many areas of the game and setting partner up nicely, then they must capitalise on it. Look at this. This is a perfect attacking drive there by Service Fukushima. Over five, all. Yeah, it's great awareness, isn't it, as to where the gap was. It wasn't just the technique of the backhand. I also feel that that maybe is a contributing factor to the fact that Fukushima and Hirota have not won the World Championship. They came second twice and they are winning some, but they're also losing some. In order, imagine they have been really high mm. for quite a while. 
but they have only been world number one for 13 weeks. Yeah. S somehow it's saying something. They're very steady. They're always in the quarterfinals, semifinals, and finals, always up there somewhere. Mm. But they could be winning more. And Service I think over. the key Six, is that heroes four. really have to start practicing these winning shots. It's a little similar to Mizaki Matsutomo and Ayaka Takahashi, the reigning Olympic champions, because I thought the difference when they suddenly became the world's best and then went on to win the Olympic gold medal, I thought the difference was Matsutomo mm. had suddenly improved her net play and was I, hunting I the shuttle more. Absolutely. She, Instead of playing these just 100% uh, safe shots, she suddenly went for winners and she was very successful doing it mm. and that really helped the combination. Yeah. And they are sort of getting back into the top of the world, I think, Seven, that other six. Japanese pair. Mm. And uh, now they are second on the world ranking. So I think they are gearing up for 2020 Tokyo. In defence of their title? Yes, yeah. definitely. Yeah. yeah, they won the China Super 1000 and in Korea. Plate. Yeah, I like the rotation with Fukushima going out Service from over. the net, Seven, allowing her four. partner to come forward, Hirota. It seemed quite effortless within the middle of the rally. Not quite the longest rally of the match so far, that last one. Oh. Just long. I have to say, it's good to see Tanaka and Yonimoto Seven. back on the winning. I know they haven't won this this tournament. They haven't won a tournament this year, but they were out at the beginning of the year with injury problems, so they weren't playing at all, or they with, withdrew from the Indonesian Masters. Very good to see them back to full fitness and playing well again. Now, they got a little bit confused on the re rotational play. That's it. That's what I want to see. Mm. Nine, seven. That was well played by Hirota. Not standing too close to the net, therefore gave her an opportunity for interception, and she did well on that uh, backhand side. Fukushima actually had two opportunities where I felt that she was just Ten, blocking. Seven. I accept that the last block was a winner, but I still believe that she could have done better and more decisive Yeah, on the first and the second one. Ah. So, Sarah, Eight, from Fukushima, ten. first of the match.
Yeah. Well, that was well taken. That was more decisive. And the reward, a three-point advantage here at the mid-game interval of the opening game for the number one seeds, Yuki Fukushima and Sayaka Hirota. Yeah, for a coach, there are two ways of not working on a Sunday. Either you have no players in the final, or you have both pairs of <laughs> yes. <in the> final. <laughs> That's a way not to work on a Sunday. Yeah. And I must say, the Japanese coaches are doing really well in women's doubles. They yeah. even had a chance here to have four in the semi-final. Mm. And uh, I thought they would have done seconds. it, but uh, some of the top seconds. pairs they lost, quite mm. surprisingly. Mm. The world champions, they lost to the Dutch pair, um, Peak and Sainen. In the very first round. In the first round, yes. That was the, the world champions. Mm. And then the Olympic champions, Matsutomo and Takahashi, lost in the second round to Kim Hai Jiong and Kong Hee Yong, who went on to reach the semi final, as we were talking about. Yep. Play. So they could have had four in the, se in the semi final. Yeah. There was a tournament not long ago that happened. Was that in uh, Taipei? I think it was in Taipei. It was in Taipei. So imagine not having to work from Saturday onwards. and it's got the net cord. Shiho Tanaka on the drop shot there. And Morton, just for the record, it wasn't just in Taipei. That was the second consecutive Nine, World 11. Tour event it had happened, because it happened in Korea as well. It did in Korea as well. All four women's doubles pairs in the semi-final from Japan. Well taken. Ten, eleven. See you. Get ready. Oh dear, that's a shocking serve. But my goodness, they got away with that. 11 all. Yeah, three points. But Tanaka and Yonemoto here since the mid game interval. Decisive at the front of the court with her interceptions. 12, yeah. 11. But this is this is what I'm looking at. She's standing in the right position, not too close to the net. Give her a chance to intercept. Comes in that forehand and she just whacks it. Yeah. And I, I think that's that's really good play there by Yonemoto. Four straight points since the mid-game interval. Oh, my save. That's remarkable. We can get a racket to it. 12. Oh.
course, this pair under the old tournament structure of Super Series did win two titles, not only those Super Series finals I was telling you about, also one in India last year, Tanaka and Yonimoto. It's out, no doubt. Service over. 13, no reason to. 12. Oh, crikey, it was closer than I thought, Morton. No, no, no. <laughs> it's out <laughs> by a fair margin. <laughs> <laughs> no reason for Hawkeye. That's landed in. That's a misjudgment from Fukushima. 14, 12. That's great defence, wasn't it, from Yoni It was on that uh, backhand and forehand situation. Lucky neck called again. Yeah, second time. 14 all. Uh, I must say that this match is uh, developing as I anticipated it. Yeah. Like 11 or 12 or 13. Yeah, very all. tight. It's tight all the way. It's impossible to predict what's going to happen. Oh. Missed it. Yeah, but that was a good in interception 15, by... Uh, 14. By Yonemoto, try to knock that one. The one before where she intercepted going cross court, that was mm. really well played. But I, I feel in general that Tanaka and Yonemoto uh, play more of a, a risky game. They go for their shots more. They're far more adventurous in what they're trying to achieve. Whereas Fukushima and Hirota are just very steady. And as you've pointed out, we'd like to see them a, a bit more committed yeah. to, to finishing the rally when the opportunity the half opportunity or full opportunity presents itself. They're, in my book, they're almost too steady. Yeah. It's too safe. And um, when you are in a position like what they are, as world number one, they are there with three, four other pairs, maybe mm. five pairs, then how am I going to distinguish myself? How, how am I going to make myself different to the others? Yeah. And that, that's what they have to look at. Yeah. And uh, you definitely Service don't do over. it by just being more and more safe. Mm. Every, 16, every pair in that top five can do the same. Mm. And you have to find a way to be different. Yeah. And then when you say that, it's probably easy to say but I feel that they can do it because they have the technical ability to do it. It would be easy for us to sit up here and say, oh, they have to do so-and-so if you haven't Service got over. that technical ability. To yeah. Do. But they do have it. Mm. And 16, that's why I want four. to see it. Line judge.
So I know it's not me asking the questions, but I would like... You have been around here for 25 years, you've seen so... Ooh, steady on. <laughs> so many Kubans and players come yeah. and going. In your opinion, in women's doubles, what's, what's the best pair? Thank you. That I've ever seen. Yes. Gilfe and Gujun. You think that's the best pair? Definitely. They took women's doubles to a new level because... I think that they were doing exactly what you've talked about because they absolutely went for it at the front of the court. They were all out attack. And especially Gerfay at the front of the court, I thought she was a remarkable player, but she was only able to be the remarkable player at the front of the court because Gu Jung at the back of the court was setting her up the whole time. Okay. That's interesting because I think there have been so many good pairs yeah. coming and going. But it's been very difficult for me because I've not followed it in the same way as you have. Mm. Why not? Um, I've not been commentating for that many years. <laughs> Good answer. Oh, that's going wide. Yeah, disappointed with that. Yanni Moto can tell from her body 18, language. 16. Yeah. yeah, well spotted in the wrong formation, Tanaka and Yanni Moto. Now, why on earth wasn't she ready there, Morton? I don't know. It's just extraordinary how players nowadays, I mean, they look as if they're ready, and then they just don't react to the serve. And that's enough to get yeah. a let. Yeah. 19-16. Two points away from the opening game. Fukushima and Hirota. Yeah, it's very seldom you see uh, an umpire calling a fault when when they just let it go and say, no, I'm not ready. Mm. Years ago, it, it happened more often, I think, yeah. where the umpire went in and said, no, no, you were ready. You could have taken it. Yeah. Game oh! points, opportunities now. 20. For the two-time World Championship silver medalist, Fukushima and Hiroka. Oh, service fault called. First service fault of the match. Service over. 17. Above 1.15 metres. Two game points have come and gone, but another 18, two remain. 20. Yeah, and another game point well saved. Good smash from Nonimoto.
this time on their fourth game point opportunity. Yuki Fukushima and Sayaka Hirota close out the opening game 21-19. Twenty six minutes for that opening game. Twenty one nineteen, the score line. So, as Morton was pointing out a little earlier, of course, no coaching staff involved players left to their own devices. And that sometimes is not bad. When they do that, you know, you always have this kind of discussion where it helps the players to have the coach or not have the coach. In many occasions, of course, it helps a lot to have the coach and someone to discuss it with. But I also think on other occasions, it's good for the players to learn to handle it themselves and it becomes more independent. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And, and not only whether it's good for the overall development of the player or the pair, uh, there is also a, a question as to whether coaches should be involved during the contest, the match in badminton, when it's an individual sport. I mean, that's, uh, that in itself, I can quite see for team sports that you need somebody, a, a manager, to be directing the tactics and when changes are made and so on. But there's a fundamental question as to whether the coach should be involved in, at all in individual sport. They should be involved in the preparation, but whether they should be involved with... That's a whole different argument, and I don't want to go there at the yeah. moment. Oh, we can go for hours. <laughs> Second game. Well, you, having been a professional Double. coach, <laughs> I know which side you'll be on. No, 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 not necessarily. Play. Not necessarily. So here we go, second game. Number one seeds, Yuki Fukushima and Sayaka Hirota. One game to the good. Was landed in. One love. Service okay. ah. over. One all. Now that's a very positive return of serve. I like that from uh, Yoni Moto. She, she is decisive at the front of the court. She is definitely. Um, as you say, she's more risk-taking uh, than the other combination. Uh, she also Two, makes more mistakes. One. She was the one that made uh, some of the mistakes, I think at least three out of the four. Uh, 16 all in the uh, first game and then to 20. Yeah. And uh, then uh, she was also the one scoring when they <laughs> came back to 19. So, yes, she is more risk-taking, but she also got more power. Mm. Service error. That's Two, a second three. for the number one seeds.
placements on that final smash from Hirota. Four, three. Right in between the two players. Mm. That's very good. Service over for all. Yeah, good interception. But this is uh, the next dimension I'm kind of looking at in, in women's doubles. Is that the counter-attacking drives Five, the flat ones four. where it's really punishing and you pass the front player with a very fast drive is still something that we don't see a lot in women's doubles they block it they lift mm. it yeah sometimes they try but it, it's not there that was one yeah Rota actually just played one there yeah and I like that, where you really Six, try to, to, to push that mm. oh. and pass right. the front player and then move forward and see if you can be decisive and intercept. Yeah. And especially also when there, a lot of smashing goes down the centre of the court. But should it not be completely accurate, then you can punish your opponent by playing such a nice drive back to them. But you have to be very proactive when uh, in your mind and thinking to do it. Yeah. Seven, four. of this. Oh, I think this is probably going to be the longest run of the match so far. Oh, that's clever. Lovely, lovely change of pace from Shiho Tanaka. Eight, four. Played with real disguise. 83 shots. Very nearly twice as many shots as the previous longest rally. They had one r rally yesterday on against the, the two Indonesians on 126. 126? <laughs> yes. There's no lack of effort, is there? Definitely not. Eight, four, play. Oh, another 
her service error. It's over 9-5. Second from her, third in total from the pair. Pays the compliment. It's over. Me. Six nine. Fleet <laughs> pays the compliment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the one. The one Yonemoto is trying to play there, Seven, that flat nine. drive, that's the one I'm looking for. I know she's missing it, but it will go back into the feet of Fukushima mm. and she will find it difficult from that situation. Total confusion. <laughs> Fukushima came out on the wrong side there. Nobody noticed except you. <laughs> Should have come <laughs> off from the net, come come back straight. She went yeah, cross court. She did. That's just long. Oh, challenge here. It's long. She, she mm. Tanaka, challenges yeah, I thought so too. Call out. Cool line judge, good call, Morton. Challenge unsuccessful. <laughs> Same to you. <laughs> One there we go. Remaining. Yep, definitely out. Seven nine. Eight nine. Play. Another good example of it. Nine, this four. drive here and then the follow up. Yep. So back level. Close the four point deficit. Yep. Eight four up. And nine five. You win. That was good instinctive play from Yoni Molto. Three nine. shots before the end of the rally. That one there, when she comes forward. Tanaka and Yoni Morto have the advantage, a two-point advantage here at the mid-game interval in the second game. 
than their opponents, Fukushima and Hirota, took the opening game. Well, we've been singing the praises of Yonimoto, especially at the front of the court, as we see confirmation of the score. And I can't help but wonder whether part of that is because as she was a youngster coming up, she was playing an awful lot of mixed doubles. In fact, she reached four international finals, winning just one, the Osaka International Challenge of 2011. And my second quiz question is, who was her partner? Habakawa. No, we're going to see him later on. Takeshi Kimura. Okay. 11 9. The next final. Kimura will be playing with Sonoda. Yeah. Play. I thought that was a good guess. It's a good qualified guess I had there. Yeah, actually. Because he, he played he, a lot of mixed. He did, and he played a lot of uh, successful mixed with uh, Mizaki Matsutomo, too. Good drop shot. Drive defence. Exactly. And four. the follow up. See, it goes into the feet. Try to have a look. Into the feet there. And it makes it very awkward for Takanaka, uh, Tanaka to get it. And that's where the follow-up becomes good. On left. 12, 11. That was a bad one. Yeah. Well, she's made two that service right. errors. She's been faulted Three as well on her four. serve, and I think she's lost a little bit of confidence. I think exactly the same. And that can be decisive. Mm. If one suddenly can't serve. Good judgment. Yeah, it actually Service happened over. to Mizaki Matsutomo, Square. didn't it? After winning the Olympic Games with Takahashi, really struggled with her low serve. Actually, a lot of players. Yeah. Does to be very honest. Yeah. Um, and it seems to be such a simple, easy shot. But there's just so oh, much. Oh dear. Yeah. No, she's all right. There yeah, she is. Yeah, I know, but in, in a way, that's. 14, you know, 12. With other shots within the rally, you have to just react to it. Mm. You have time to think about it. It's like, how is it so difficult to, to hit a. Golf. To hit a golf ball, a stationary ball. You, and I, I usually say that, you know, yeah. whenever I try, being able to play this game with closed eyes between your back between your legs and then yeah. split seconds and then suddenly you have this game where the ball is lying absolutely still and you've got all the time in mm. the world to do it and you can't do it it's got to be psychological which is what i think the issue is with the the serve
good pressure there by yeah. Tanaka. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that should have been put away by Fukushima. What a rally. Oh. It's getting quite a lot back, Fukushima. Yeah, they're still pressurising her, aren't they? They are. Extraordinary retreating, especially from Yuki Fukushima. 15-12. Not surprising, Nick. The players taking the opportunity to tell down while the court is mopped of the perspiration. 104 shots. Physical battle. A minute and a half for that last rally. And considering we're 48 minutes into the match, and not really necessarily that close to the end of the second game. <laughs> no. This could be a marathon. Could be a long, long, it long one. Could be a survival of the fittest. Yep. And if we go to that 15, 12, extreme full distance, play. I suspect that Unimoto might crumble a bit because you know, as they go on, get more and more tired. Her interceptions maybe get a little bit less precise and maybe she will start making a few more mistakes. But good power smash there yeah. on the return of serve. Service over, 13-15. Now, I know she won with that shot there, Hirota. Yes. But I felt that her opponent was only a fraction away from getting a racket to it. She was. And, and that's where you want her to be more decisive in, in making sure that there's no chance of it coming back. Exactly. It was pretty close that Tanaka almost got it. And it was a complete open court. Yeah. And it should have been more decisive. Well judged. And is this the decisive move, I wonder? Decision, both leaving it for the other. Service over, 14-17. But interesting that she's just flick serving after those very loose, low serves. I think it's a foregone conclusion. She's, she is feeling the pressure on the low serve, and mm. she's got to do something about it. And uh, I think, cleverly enough, you know, play a few flick serves and try to get back into it.
Yeah. Now that was well taken. Service over, Whoa. Oh, that is good. That is really, really good and well played by Hirota. Getting that one cross court. Try to have a look 19, at this. 14. Stepping into it and directing it completely cross court. Really well played. Two points away from the title. Fukushima and Hirota. Fukushima at the front of the court, there's hardly any movement off the shuttle. And you compare that to the previous so final we saw with Wang Yashiong and the movement she had at the front of the court, always adjusting her positioning. Much more active. Yeah. But obviously, uh, Yashiong is a, is a much, much more natural net player and front mm. court player. Yeah. She hasn't been that successful in women's doubles, has she, Yachung? She's not done badly. I'm not sure she's ever really had the, the top partner to play with. No. And I mean that with all due respect to the players she has played with. what Morton wanted to see from Hirota, that decisive move, no question. That last shot was never going to come back. There's the commitment to get in and play the winner. And it's match point opportunities for the number one seeds. One might have been long, the last one there. I thought that as well, Morton. And that's why 16, the drop shot 20. went into the net. Still another four match point opportunities. gone wide and the world number one is Yuki Fukushima and Sayaka Hirota are the teammates Shiho Tanaka and Koharu Yonimoto in two straight games 21-19 21-15 I'll oh, do you beg your pardon it was 16 in the second game match won by Yuki Fukushima Sayaka Hirota a little over 55 minutes for that two-game victory. Well, almost identical scoreline to the last time they played, which was 21-19, 21-15.
However, that last smash from the Yonemoto was really well placed. I know it was going out, but the idea was really good. Yeah. So the prize presentation coming up in just a moment as the champions make their way to the podium. Presented by Victor Medalists. Runner up from Japan, Shio Tanaka and Koharo Yonemoto. Well, they came as the number five seeds, Shio Tanaka and Koharu Yonemoto. But and this is their first final of the, of the year. Denmark Open and a sign that they are back to full fitness. By Victor, women's doubles, with a final score of 21-19, 21-16. From Japan, Yuki Fukushima and Sayaka Hirata. Their fifth title of the year when playing in their eighth final. The Denmark Open title to add to the German Open, the Asian Championships, the Indonesian and Japan Opens as well. Presented by Victor. Well, the fifth title of the year. Fourth World Tour title. The Czech and Badminton Denmark mascots are presented by Rolf Aurin, CEO of Vita Europe. Presented by Pandilla Bendixen, Deputy Mayor of Ulster City. Deserved champions, the world number ones, Yuki Fukushima and Sayaka Hirota. In a short moment, there will be a short interview with the winners. Ah, that's nice. Inviting their opponents onto the top of the podium. 